Hey YouTube, I guess quite a few of you have seen the YouTube video where some poor unfortunate soul gets blown up while cutting into a tank at work. I'm not sure if that particular video is real or just clever special effects, but the danger of cutting into a tank is very real and quite often deadly. On the other hand, you can make some very cool stuff out of old tanks of all sorts, and they can be cut safely if you take a few elementary and logical precautions. I won't say I'm an expert at this, but I have cut into a few tanks over the years and I believe my method to be 100% safe. If I didn't believe it to be safe, I wouldn't be doing it. Of course, you have to be your own judge of safety and what I do in this video works for me. You need to decide if it will work for you and be safe. Final warning, I use air tools. Don't attempt this with electric tools. Let's get on and see how I do it. I want to get the valve off that old gas cylinder for reasons which will soon become apparent. And it is stuck there. I'll try and zoom in, see if you can see. Don't know if you can tell through that or not. The viewfinder is not good enough for me to actually tell, but with the naked eye, it looks to me as though it's held in there with some green Loctite. It's not verdigris, and if it's not green Loctite, it's green some gunk that sticks things in, because I've had a spanner on it, and there's just no way that that's going to move. Zoom back in for a second. As a matter of fact, I put that much pressure on it with the spanner that it actually bent that part of the valve in. Absolutely no way that that was going to move. So I cut the handle part off just with a cut-off wheel so not to put too much heat around it because although the valve is fully open and it's been empty for a number of years, it could still be something in there that's going to go bang so I don't want to get a flame around it just yet. Here's the plan now. We're going to put it in this vise here, do the vise up to hold it. And a fellow called Archimedes, many, many years ago, Greek mathematician, I think he was, said, give me a lever long enough and I will shift the world. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Not shift the world, but I'm going to shift this thing. You can see that big long lever I've got jammed in there now. Now get on the end of that, and that makes fairly easy work of it, because I've got a six foot long lever here to work with. And she's coming. Now I don't know if it's loose enough yet. Oh yeah, once you break the seal, now loose enough to do by hand. Now it's getting loose enough that so I think I can take it out of the vise and actually screw this in. Oh, there we have it. May undo this screw here on the side to see when it's full, and as the level of the liquid comes up, forced up this tube by the bell nozzle here, and out the side, and that says it's full, so when it's full, it's actually only up to about there, which is fine, because you're paying by weight. It's interesting nevertheless, I didn't know that's how they worked. Makes sense when you think about it. You've got to have something to cause the overflow because otherwise you'd be all the way up to the top before it started coming out and then a little bit of heat expansion and it might go bang. Anyway, that's the principle of leverage. And while we're on the subject of gas cylinders, I'll just mention, whew, yeah, you can still smell the gas in that even after all these years of sitting around with the valve open. So before I do anything about cutting it, I'm going to fill it with water. Once it's filled with water, uh, flushed out once or twice, then I'll cut through it while it's full of water. Stop any chance of explosion. And I'm going to show you what I believe to be the safe way to cut one of these old propane tanks apart. I filled it up with water and I stopped it up with what I got for a bag. And because it's full of water, I'm using an air tool grinder. The idea is to cut around the fender of it, and the idea behind the air tool is there's no electricity around the water when it starts to spray out. The bloke in the store said you should try one of these, they're so much better than the bracer cutting blades. You get thousands of cuts out of these, he said. Well, not getting thousands of cuts out of it. Hardly used the damn thing, and it's not cutting nearly as well as I'd expect out of an ordinary abrasive blade. As a matter of fact, I'd say that's next to hat at that blade. And I don't think I've got any more use out of it than I would out of an abrasive blade, and it costs like ten times as much. 
I don't think I'll be buying any more of them, but I have got some abrasive blades which I'm going to go and get. I'm doing a review on them in another video. I'll post a link to that. They're way cheaper than anything I can buy locally, and we'll see how they go. Eighty seconds, I thought it was going to be. Wow. That is one thick bit of metal. No wonder it took so much cutting. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Please remember that safety begins and ends with you, so put a little bit of thought into what you're doing and stay safe. If you'd like to see more of my projects and reviews, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.